Okay. Okay. So Kevin, let's say now I have a job. I've been working for some time now and I don't feel like going anywhere. I don't feel like it's suited for me. I realized mm, I don't like the work. It's very challenging and I don't, I'm ill-equipped for skills, for personality, for passion. I simply don't like that. Then how should I pivot from one job to another job? Or more specifically, if I feel like the industry is not a good fit for me, let's say I've been studying in economics and finance for the whole four years of university degree, and I've been working in the bank for one year, let's say one year, enough sample times, then I just feel like banking is not for me. But I have the concern of mm, what would be the future employer perceived of my changing from one industry to another industry. And how would I be able to change to another industry? So maybe let's start with the perception of the employer if I want to change. Yeah, so these days I see that it's a lot more often and a lot more frequent that people change jobs in, in a much shorter time frame. You know, back in the days when I was at your age, we normally would stick at the job for at least two to three years before we think about changing. But now it's very common for me to see students change after one year, uh, sometimes even shorter. Uh, and they will change you know, on average two or three jobs in, in three years time. It's very common. Now, from an employer perspective, my question is the reason for the change. And it depends on how well you explain yourself. Uh, either that makes sense to me, or I'm going to think that you're just an unstable employee and I don't even want to interview you, right? So uh, you, you don't know who is looking at the CV. You don't know how conservative or how open this person is. Uh, some people that I know, when they look at a jumpy CV, they simply just take it out. They just, I don't even want to bother looking at it. Um, so there is uh, a concern uh, if they're too jumpy. And so before that happens, my suggestion would be, before you even think about quitting, when you ask yourself this question, why I don't like this job. My suggestion is just take a little bit more time and don't ask this question when you are emotionally impacted by something happening at work because making any decision when you're emotional is almost always wrong. Okay. People don't like their job for a whole host of reasons. A lot of time it's got nothing to do with the job itself. A lot of time it's got with, to do with the people that they work with or the way they interact with those people. Okay? Now, when I say that, it does not mean something is wrong necessarily with the people. It could be something that may not be totally ideal about themselves uh, that causes other people to treat them in a certain way. So you need some time to reflect and you need some time to gain clarity about what is it I am not happy about this job, really. And it's not as easy as it sounds because when you're in the picture, you can't see the frame. You are so deep into it. You, you start telling yourself story with bias and no one is keeping you honest, basically. Okay. And so when an employer asks you, oh, why did you like the job? You're creating so many different reasons that doesn't make sense for the employer. Okay. Oh, I'm not learning anything from this job. What? You've only been there for a year and you're not learning already? Oh, yeah, I've been doing the same job every every day. Who is not doing this doing the same job every day? Largely, right? Even, you know, when I get to even when I get to managing director, there are a certain part of my day that looks similar every day. Okay. Do I say that I'm not learning anything? No, because if you want to learn, there is always something you can learn. And so these days, uh, a number of young people seem to have a very tight definition of the word learning. 
So if I'm not doing something very different, different technically, I'm not learning. They don't regard learning about uh, dealing with people as learning. They don't regard learning how to uh, communicate better as learning. Uh, I see all of those as learning. In fact, more important than the hard skills because you know, technology is coming. Some of the hard skills are going to be replaced. Actually, they become less important. Uh, we all know, right? Uh, back in the days when you need calculator, now you have a spreadsheet, you have database. How many times do we need calculator anymore? We press the button and the number comes out, right? So, uh, so in my view, the reason for leaving is extremely important before you leave. And, and I've advised someone specifically on this particular question. And I said, look, if you find certain things challenging, and it is not because you lack the qualification for it, okay? Let's say because you didn't do a degree, that's why you're challenging. It's not because of that. It's because maybe you're not willing to do certain things in a certain way. You're not willing to change and adopt, okay? My suggestion is you can still quit, but you're only allowed to quit after you have conquer that challenge so i know someone who did that and he didn't like his job for a whole host of reasons okay but none of which is really you know uh unable to be overcome by him adopting and changing himself and so he stick out for another year and finally he got a promotion which means he overcome all of that, obviously. So from a performance perspective, they, he's recognized and say, hey, you're ready for the next stage. On the day he got the promotion, he quit. Just to prove to himself, I'm not quitting because I can't do it. I want to make sure I can do it. And then I can tell myself, I just don't want to do it anymore. And here's the proof. I think that is a very admirable way to answer to yourself and keep, to, to keep accountable to yourself about the reason why you quit. And it's not because, oh, I've got a boss that's very difficult to work with. I've got colleagues that are, you know, very cold and, you know, uncaring and therefore I'm quitting. We're always going to face with some external factors that we can't control. And if every time those factors exist, we just quit, we just always be quitting. So that would be my suggestion. You've got to make sure that the reason you quit is not because you could not succumb to certain challenge, but you have overcome all the challenges and you just say, hey, I still want to quit because I don't like this anymore. Then you can say that. And there are also challenges that are uncontrollable, right? It's outside external circumstance, just like we mentioned, AI disruption, right? automation. What yeah. if I have the awareness and the knowledge to see that, okay, in my field of work, AI displacement is coming. Like mm -hmm. my job or my role is going to be de either be supplemented or entirely displaced by AI and robots. Mm -hmm. And if I have that awareness and I see that it's coming, I need to pivot, right? It's not like I can overcome that challenge because if I'm waiting for it to come, and it displays me, it's not like I can overcome it by doing a better job than an AI, right? Let's say right. quantum computing is coming. Like a human brain can't compete at all with a quantum computer. So mm -hmm. in that case, I have the awareness. I know that I need to pivot. Then how should I do the pivoting? Or when should I do it? Because it's not right in the face, but it's coming. So should I get prepared right now? Or should I see how it goes. What would be your advice for that? I think if you if you have that kind of awareness, um, you're more likely to be the kind of people that keeps yourself updated with things that are happening that is new. And it's more likely that uh, hopefully you would have some sort of idea of where you want to pivot if you were to pivot because you have been seeing it coming for a little while you know, and then it's now looming closer and you say, okay, maybe this is time to go, right? And hopefully during that time, you have thought about it and somehow you have already starting 
to either get knowledgeable or get experienced into something that you want to pivot into. And if you do, I think it would be worth it to document it, what you've done, what you know, so that when you bring yourself to the new employer in which you want to pivot to, when he says something like, well, Francis, you know, you're not from this industry, so why are you interested? And, you know, what 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 makes you think you can actually start and survive here? Because you're not, you know, you, you're not you're not from here and you're not like junior staff. You've been working for a few years. Uh, I'm just a little uncertain as to, you know, what 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 can you bring to us? Now you have to have that story ready. Okay. And there are two elements. One, why do you want to pivot into this industry? So I want to hear your conviction why you're interested, your personal conviction. Okay. And basically, I want to hear your story. Okay. And when I say you're interested, I don't want to hear, oh, Kevin, I'm interested because I studied this and I researched. No, but why do you want to study it? Why do you want to research it? What has this field uh, mean so much to you? You know, what is the meaning of this industry to you? That's what I really want to know. Secondly, because you don't have experience, well, what else can you bring to this role? Then you've got to tell me all the portable skills that you have acquired and how those portable skills fits into the functional requirement of this role that you seek that will still be relevant. And I think regardless of uh, you know technology, all of the interpersonal skills that we were talking about before, like communication, uh, problem solving, uh, uh, listening, uh, you know, time management and organization, all of those kind of skills, they would be needed in any role, in any industry, in any job, junior or senior. I just don't think it can go wrong by emphasizing those parts that you're really strong at or better than the average person, and then relate that back into the job description that requires those qualities and say, well, that's why you're suitable. It sounds like a very cliche, right? If you're good enough, you're good enough. Like, obviously, you need to know how to demonstrate where you're good at and to match it with the requirement of the job or of the industry. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other lasting thoughts you have for this topic? Uh, no, I think that that covered it pretty well. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.